The temperature is heating up again as we approach the end of summer and I wanted to make the best of it by making some bouza, stretchy Middle Eastern ice cream. This ice cream is famous throughout the Middle East for its stretchiness and delicate flavour, but is even more popular in Syria where this recipe originates. The restaurant Bikdesh that claimed to have invented it in the 19th century are still selling bouza in the Damascus market to this day. The texture is so unique and satisfying and is very different than regular ice cream. It's almost like frozen molten marshmallows. Today I'm going to show you how to make the perfect bouza using just 4 ingredients and no fancy tools. This makes a great alternative to normal ice cream and is a perfect base to customise with any flavours you like. Before we get started, I'm Obi and I want to get you cooking delicious Middle Eastern food at home. Consider subscribing if you'd like to see new step by step Middle Eastern recipes every week. Now let's jump right in. So we'll start off by preparing the bouza ice cream base and for that we need 2 special ingredients. The first one is mastic and that is a resin that comes from pine trees. This resin has a slight pine flavour that's very mild and pleasant when used in small amounts. Mastic also contains special chemical compounds that give it a gummy texture and so using it here gives some extra bounce to the bouza. The other special ingredient is sahleb or salep and that is ground wild orchid root. The salep contains a chemical called glucomannan which gives the bouza its stretchiness. The salep itself has a bit of a marshmallow or taro flavour which goes nicely with the mastic. I got my salep from Greece and I'll leave a link in the description for the seller as it can be hard to find. You can apparently also make this with konjac flour instead of the salep but I haven't tried it myself. Before putting the base together you should crush 3-4 to four large pieces of mastic into a fine powder. Freeze your mastic for a short while and then use a mortar and pestle to crush it until fine. To start the base, place a heavy bottomed pot on medium heat, then add in 1 litre or 4 cups of fresh whole milk. You have to use whole milk for this otherwise the texture won't end up right. If you can't get fresh milk and only have UHT or if your whole milk is not creamy then substitute 1 cup of heavy cream for 1 cup of milk. Heat the milk on medium heat until it just starts to steam. When that happens add in your sugar, the crushed mastic and 1 tablespoon of salad powder. Immediately whisk it all together until well combined. Then you will keep whisking and stirring it for about 30 to 40 minutes over a medium heat. Throughout the whole cooking process you need to make sure that this doesn't come to a boil as it can stop your salad from stretching correctly. As you're mixing it, it will get foamy at first and grow in size. After about 5 minutes the foam will dissolve and you'll notice the mixture is thicker than normal milk. If you get tired mixing, be sure to hand over to someone else as if you leave it it can develop a crust in the bottom of the pot which can alter the final texture. After 15 or 20 minutes it will have thickened quite a bit and resemble a runny custard. After 30 to 40 minutes it will reach the consistency of condensed milk and that's the point you should stop cooking it at. It should be quite thick but you should still be able to pour it easily. Once you get to this stage pour it out into a jug or bowl and let it cool in the fridge for a few minutes. If you have an ice cream machine you can add your boozer at this stage. But a word of warning, this stuff gets sticky and stretchy. It burnt out the motor on my cheap machine and frankly it isn't necessary. Instead I'm going to be doing a multi-stage freeze which yields amazing results. Grab a bowl with a large surface area that will fit in your freezer and pour your boozer mix into it. Once in you need to start whisking it again. But this time stretch the mixture upwards with your whisk and be sure to splash it onto the sides of the bowl. Place the bowl in your freezer for 30 to 40 minutes and then remove and repeat the whisking for about 5 minutes. This disrupts the formation of ice crystals and helps the bouza start to stretch. Make sure to scrape down the sides and give it a thorough mixing and stretching before placing it back in the freezer again for 30 to 40 minutes. You'll repeat this process 4 to 6 times. Each time whisk, stretch and scrape your bouza and every time it will be a little bit thicker than the last. After my second round the bouza had start to clump together and you could see elastic balls forming as I mix it. On the third round you can see how it stretches into ribbons as I pull the whisk away from the bowl. And on this fourth stretch it has now incorporated into a single large mass. I did 5 total whisks for this batch before folding it in on itself and allowing it to freeze up overnight. The next day I got it out of the freezer and I allowed it to rest for 15 minutes before stretching once more. You can see just how stretchy it is, it almost resembles pizza dough. In fact I think the sign of good bouza is the window pane test. 
you should almost be able to see through it when stretched. If your boozer has frozen solid overnight, then you can stretch it by hand to soften it or leave it out for a bit longer and then give it one more freezing round to bring it back together again. Like gelato, boozer is usually served a few degrees above zero rather than freezing. It also melts a lot quicker, so be sure to keep it cold until you need it. To serve the booza, I decided to make some cornefa cones, which I think fit the Middle Eastern theme. To do this, I grabbed some fresh cornefa or kadaifi from a Turkish grocery store before wrapping it around some horn-shaped molds. I took this method from Cleobutra's blog, so I'll leave a link in the description for her post about these, where she goes into detail on how to make them. Here's the basic instructions. First, get a long bunch or two of fresh cornefa, and starting at the closed tip of the horn, wrap your cornefa tightly. Keep rotating the horn and wrapping the cornefa in an even and tight manner, making sure the cone is completely covered in cornefa and no gaps exist. If your cornefa runs out, just tuck another segment under the existing one and keep wrapping it. As I got to the end of the mold, I grabbed some scissors and cut the cornefa so there is just enough to overlap. Once wrapped, wet your hands with some water and then gently press the end of the cornefa strands onto the mold. This will make them stick to each other and keep the form of the mold. Do this all the way around the mold until all stray cornefa strands are smooth and aren't sticking out. Be careful though, you don't want to use too much water as it can turn the cornefa into mush. So make sure to use a little bit and a light touch. Once you've formed all your cones, let them sit and air dry overnight. The next day, pull on the cones slightly till they just release from the mold. Then melt some clarified butter and dip each cone into the butter until evenly coated. Lay them on a greaseproof tray and place them in an oven preheated to 200 degrees Celsius or 390 degrees Fahrenheit to bake for 16 to 20 minutes until golden brown. Rotate them midway to ensure even browning. While they're in the oven, prepare a simple syrup. Details for that are in my Cornefa video and the link is in the description below. Pour the syrup onto your cones as soon as they come out of the oven and rotate to make sure you get it on all sides. Once they've cooled, all that's left to do is to pop your cones off of the molds and they are ready to use. So before serving, all that's left to do is give the boozer one final stretch. I recommend wearing gloves if you'll be doing this by hand, as it gets very sticky. As you can see, it's got some serious stretch to it, which translates to an amazing texture. The closest thing I can describe it as is the texture of melted marshmallows, but cold. The flavour is also amazing. It's a very light flavour which is a bit piney and a bit nutty, but it's really neutral. Now if you wanted to, you could add any fillings or flavourings at this stage. In Damascus they usually add chopped pistachios before serving, which is exactly what I did to these bowls that I put together. Even using a teaspoon you can see just how stretchy this stuff really is. For the cornefa cones, I'm just topping them with a generous serving of booza and then some pistachio chunks. Like I mentioned, this stuff melts fast. Serve it immediately after scooping and don't mess around filming things like I did. You definitely don't have to make these cones with the booza, but it's just such a fun combination to eat. Stretchy cold booza inside crispy cornefa is a winner every day of the week for me. If you're a big fan of ice cream, I really recommend you give this one a try and let me know how it turns out. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like, share and subscribe as it really helps the channel. As usual, all the ingredients and directions are in the description box and I'll be back next week with another recipe.